One of the big reveals at BlizzCon was the return of Zalatath to World of Warcraft in the War Within expansion. Since I encountered her in Battle for Azeroth, she's been one of my favourite potential antagonists, mainly because she's been fairly ambiguous as a character, which I think makes her a lot more interesting than the more in-your-face villains like the Jailer with his pitiful mortals. Uh, yeah. In this video, I'm going to discuss where I'd personally like Blizzard to take this character to make full use of her. This isn't really a speculation video as such. Given how they've developed the story in the last two expansions, I'm not actually super confident this is a direction they would want to go in or even be able to pull off well. But perhaps with Metzen back in the creative leadership chair and rumours of a bit of a changing of the guard in the WoW's narratives team, we can still hope. But before I dive into where I'd like them to go, let's take a quick recap of what we know of Zalatath. I'm going to ignore her recent experiences in Season of Discovery as that doesn't really majorly change her narrative and just stick to her appearances in the retail game. We first encounter her as players in the Legion Order Hall campaign, specifically for Shadow Priests who are sent to retrieve the mysterious blade of the Black Empire that's called Zalatath. This powerful weapon turns out to be inhabited by an ancient spirit which regularly whispers to the priest. These whispers quickly establish Zalatath's ambiguous nature, with the whispers sometimes being supportive, sometimes helpful, but always snarky and often sometimes a bit dismissive. She always gave off a fairly sinister vibe right from the very start that leaves us guessing as to what her motives are. That's honestly if she even had any motives because, you know, she is a blade. Now, while she was mostly content to just be wielded as a weapon, there is a moment where she manages to convince the Shadow Priest to try to drain Elune's power in the tomb of Sargeras, which results in presumably Elune killing the hapless priest. That's not exactly the actions of a friend there, is it? Her whisper that she says after that event kind of implies that it was a bit unexpected, but their tone of voice is, you know, more amused than upset by the fate of the priest. And that really does tell us that Maybe, she, you know, she isn't the friend that maybe the Shadow Priest shot she was. Anyway, after Legion, the blade is presumably abandoned by the priest. And, and who can blame them abandoning a blade that would do that to you, to be honest? Until it eventually falls into the hand of Collector Koju and BFA, who then gives it back to the player character. And this time it's not limited to police. That could be any of us. Um, this then reads us in a bit of a mission to Drustvar, where Zalatath is able to take over the body of a Void Elf. Zalatath then goes ahead and leads us to the Crucible of Storms, where she hands us straight over to Nizoth. In return for that, Nizoth releases her permanently from the blade. Now, what was always super interesting about that particular section was her final dialogue after Nizoth freezes, where she says... Shadows guide you, my dear friend. We'll meet again. I am certain of it. Now, that line's always fascinated me, as it actually, I kind of feel it makes equal sense for it to have been directed towards us, given, you know, the Shadow Priest spent two years with us, or directed at Nizoth, who, let's just face it, she just handed us over to him. Now, the backstory of the Blade in Legion suggested that Zalatath had been imprisoned inside the Blade by the Old Gods. Now, I don't know about you, but I would not consider somebody who locked me up for millennia as a particularly good friend. And even if Nizoth wasn't actually involved in that, he clearly was able to release her and, well, didn't bother until we get handed over to them. That's not friendly either way, let's face it. At the same time, if she was referring to us, tricking us into the hands of Nizoth, with friends like that, who needs an enemy? Now, it's likely that was just Stark, but, you know, perhaps she did have some sympathy for the player, and that, I will see you again, I'm certain to it, could well have been an attempt to reassure us. And, as it turns out, Nizoth, at least at this point, wasn't super hostile. He gives us a gift, the Eye of Nizoth, which 
doesn't really seem to have much in the way of ill effects. In fact, back in BFE, we could choose to keep it. Or we could ask Brother Pike or Talanji, depending on our faction, to remove it. So maybe she just felt that his gift wasn't such a bad thing for us. Now, one of the interesting things about her pre-Legion backstory, as told in game, is that it's all through rumours and speculation, which means that she doesn't actually have a canonical truth of a backstory. All we have is these snippets told to us by others. Now, one of the status theories is that she's a remained of an old god that was consumed by the other. But another is that she was the claw of Yusharaz. Now, with Dragonflight lore reprising some vanilla WoW lore about there having been five old gods, I kind of prefer this form of theory. Now, Chronicle eventually established there were only four old gods, but, you know, that could just mean that there were four around when the Titans found them in Azeroth. And, you know, having a fifth old god, yeah, I could potentially be kind of interesting, especially if it's Zalatath. And it also raises an interesting question for me. If she was the fifth old god, why did the others turn on her? Now, we know the old gods didn't really get on with each other and warred a lot, but presumably locking one up would have required them to come together and work together to do that. So, if that's the case, what was it about her that made them all come together to get her locked up? Did she have different aims to the others? Was she some kind of traitor to her cause, which presumably was the mission of corrupting Azeroth? I, I, I think that's just a really interesting but unanswered question that we could set up to explore. So here's my idea. The word Harbinger can mean someone who's leading the way or showing the way for something that's coming. But it can also mean an announcer or even somebody who's warming, warning us about the future. So how about instead of being some kind of an attack, how about she comes to us with a dire warning? A warning that we or the leaders of Azeroth are not going to find particularly palatable. Something that, you know, right from the very start will be, is she telling the truth? Is she trying to trick us? Or... You know, but it's serious enough. We have to just take it in trust and deal with it. That, I think, could be a kind of super cool way for them to take the game. And with the new cinematic suggesting Azeroth is becoming more active and trying to contact us, how about Salatus comes to warn us about Azeroth? Well, Azeroth's traditional lore is that she's a baby titan and therefore presumably good. She was subjected to old god corruption for, well, who knows how long? And what if the old gods succeeded? There's a ton of titan machinery buried under the surface, not all of which was used for the old god prisons. They even went as far as to create a doomsday device to destroy all life and cleanse the planet, even though the original narrative was that the reason they locked the old gods up and took that risk was because they didn't want to wipe out all life in the planet. So one idea I have is that the machinery was actually an attempt to reverse Azeroth's corruption and that the Forge of Origination was less about a worry about the old gods getting out and more a tool to destroy her if it all failed. Now, back in Wrath, of course, we, in the Algia raid, convince Algalon not to activate it even when he thinks it should. Maybe Azeroth is corrupted and maybe she's about to awaken and so Zalatath comes to warn us of that. But given that Zalatath is a void agent, could we or would we trust her with a story like that? Or another idea is that back in BFA, in the Maghar Orc Heritage questline, it was established that Yarel was reading a bit of an army of zealots on a crusade to bring the light to everywhere. And when you combine that with the kind of Zira v Illidan narrative in Legion, there's plenty of suggestions that the light isn't as good as we all thought. And you know, with the Scarlets out there doing light shenanigans, turning into like light elementals, maybe the light is coming from us and maybe Zalatath wants to warn us and offer some help. Could we end up being given a, t a choice between believing Zalatath and believing Yarill? I know that would be a kind of hard one. Or maybe she just wants to try and convince us that the Void aren't the bad guys the Titan and the Narrow make out. 
maybe she can give us some evidence to make us question our current beliefs and all of the entities out there. Either way, I think it would be really, really interesting if we were kept guessing about our motives and, you know, perhaps we we're forced to work with her, even though there's a lot of doubts over whether that will lead to a good thing. The player character in Azeroth has a bit of a history of performing some, quite frankly, rank stupid actions that have led to very bad consequences. So it definitely be on form for us. Even better would be if we're presented by situations where there's something that feels like it's the wrong thing to do, but we still have no choice. Do you remember that narrative back at the start of Ward when we have to release the old Gul'dan in order to close the portal and save Azeroth from the Iron Horde invasion and what he said there? There will be time for regrets later. And boy, wasn't he telling us the truth when he said that. The big question for me is, will Blizzard go down a route like this, or will they just make her the end raid boss of the war within? Historically, WoW has kind of always gone for pretty obvious villains. The Ian say that we'll know the end raid boss of an expansion at, by the end of the first patch is often turns out to be true. And the problem with that is that then it just leaves us with... with you know, the only question being, when will we defeat the bad guy? Not if, because we're always going to be defeating them. Let's be face it, the player character is probably the strongest thing out there in the Warcraft universe at the moment, even though the leaders kind of would prefer not to acknowledge that, let's face it. So, yeah. And I think Blizzard have also been pretty overt about placing Zaratath with the Redicran, and he's been quite unambiguously set up with a bad guy. Like, he's even just, he literally just threw, manipulated his brother into facing off at us, largely, I think, to create a distraction while he went off and did his other stuff. I don't really get much of a strong impression that a Redicran thought that Iraq would ever succeed and god just imagine throwing your brother incarnate straight in the path of us when he obviously understood how dangerous we would be yeah he's pretty villainous isn't he personally i suspect that zalatath will end up being another clear-cut wow baddie well i think even if they do that, her backstory in snark will make her a lot more interesting than some of the other baddies I still think that would be a shame. I, I really, really would prefer they keep that ambiguous ambiguity and make her perhaps more one of the sort of eternal baddies like uh, Ajara, who's always there, who always comes back and we never quite manage to defeat. I, I, th I think that the game's just, you know, with a bit of mystery, a little bit of uncertainty, it just makes things a lot more nuanced and a lot more interesting so yeah anyway that that's my kind of thinkings I, i'd like zalatath in summary to be not a clear-cut baddie we just fight but somebody who sometimes works for us sometimes doesn't work for us and becomes more of like a bovar character that guides us through the expansion but in a way where we don't quite feel we can trust her um I, uh, yeah, I, I think that would be a lot more interesting for us than following those sort of, like, jailer-type tropes. And, you know, I, I think all of us at the moment feel that we could probably do it with a little bit of a change in approach when it comes to the narrative. So, yeah. But anyway, what do you think? Would you prefer Salatath to be on our side? keeping us guessing or just be the end boss of midnight or whatever it is. Do let me know it in the comments below. Do you have any other thoughts of any other ideas, any other ways we could make this a bit more interesting? Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified when my next video goes live. There's be lots more news, speculation, opinion, and occasional rants soon. And also, please do hit that like icon down below to let both me and YouTube know that you want to see more of this kind of thing in the future. But that's all for now, and 
Thanks for watching.